You're watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. We are ready to roll. We are back. The energy is here. So much expectation for this season as the Coliseum is alive once again. Andrew Caridi joined alongside by WVU Hall of Famer Warren Baker. We're just moments away from action. And Bake, this is a fun one. First and foremost, we've got the crowd back. We've got the energy back. So happy to be back. Yeah, it's been a long time coming, I'll tell you, Andrew. I think everybody's fired up just to be inside and see some basketball. So West Virginia will host one of the Max Best Akron in a charity exhibition game just moments away. Here's a look at the Big 12 men's basketball preseason coaches poll. You see Kansas atop the pack, Texas at two, Baylor, and Texas Tech following them, Oklahoma State, and there's West Virginia with 49 points, Oklahoma, TCU, Kansas State, and Iowa State. Bake, this is a different West Virginia team. I mean, I know people hate to admit it, but you lose Culver, you lose Deuce, and this is going to be a year for West Virginia to find themselves once again. I agree with you a lot there, Andrew. But you know what? I think a lot of teams are going to be finding new identities this year. Yeah, West that's... Virginia picked sixth early on in the league. I think Hugs likes that. Kind of fly under the radar, but it is going to be an interesting year. Yeah, that's absolutely true. You see some of the players that West Virginia is missing from last season, not just Deuce and Derek Culver, but Jordan McCabe and Emmett Matthews, guys who are mainstays, guys who made their imprint on this program. The transfer portal is one of those things that is changing college basketball, certainly having an impact on the West Virginia program as we see West Virginia starters getting hugs from hugs as we are almost ready to roll. There's Sean McNeil, one of the returners for West Virginia. West Virginia's starting lineup looks like this. Kedrian Johnson, Taz Sherman, Sean McNeil, Jalen Bridges, and Isaiah Cottrell. A lot of expectations for Bridges and Cottrell heading into this season. Michael Dawson, the Huntington native from West Virginia. Ali Ali, Garvin Clark, Xavier Castaneda, Enrique Freeman, the five for Akron. And we're ready to go here. It is Freeman tipping off against Cottrell here at the WVU Coliseum. Alive once again in the opening tip won by Akron. Akron, a team, one of the best uh, teams in the MAC. Overall wins in the last two seasons, 39. That leads that conference and conference wins with 26. They're returning four of their starters from last season, but they did lose an important piece in Lauren Christian Johnson. Well, they certainly did 23 points a ball game. That's a big hole in the field. West Virginia in their usual man-to-man -to, -man to start the ball game. And a travel call right off the bat. Ali Ali, the 6'8 sophomore, chopped his feet. Possession, West Virginia. Now, Ali Ali, by many feel that he is the best all-around athlete on this Akron squad. So, Let's see how he goes this evening. There's Kedrian Johnson for West Virginia. He'll move it into the front court. 6-3 guard from Dallas, Texas. We'll look to orchestrate here for the Mountaineers. It's McNeil looking to free up Bridges down low. And a fadeaway jumper falling away and nailing it. Taz Sherman back for the encore in his fifth season, able to knock it down. 13 points per game last season. One guy that comes back for West Virginia who will make an impact. Well, and the Mountaineers want to see a lot of that. Mountaineers going up 2-0, and the swing pass inside. Marvin Clark's pass, unable to find its man, Enrique Freeman, the target. And the Mountaineers will inbound. Yeah, Clark had a bad angle to try to make that pass inside. Good defense by Cottrell inside as well. Andrew Creedy, Warren Baker, happy to have you with us. This is a charity exhibition game benefiting the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Endowment Fund, so it does not count, but that one does count. Three-pointer for Jalen Bridges, so it's Sherman and Bridges back-to-back, 5-0 West Virginia. And West Virginia is going to depend a lot on JB this uh, year. He showed last year what he can do, and he needs to step up here in the sophomore year. And the conversation about Bridges now is he's not a guy who's going to fly under the radar anymore. That's he, exactly he, right. He made his appearance for West Virginia, and now they know that he's going to be there, and he's going to con contribute. Well, Taz Sherman with a good defensive play at the other end. West Virginia ball again. Taz with the basketball. Look to drive his man to the basket, Sherman again. And the Mountaineers shutting out Akron in the first two minutes of the contest. Sherman's got four, Bridges has three, and it's 7-0. Mark Gross will call the timeout here for Akron to stop the bleeding. Uh, Jim Gross not happy at all. Taz Sherman able to get all the way with the rack with no resistance at all. He did not like that defense. So at a good indication here for West Virginia, they are three of three from the floor. 
four for Sherman, three for Bridges. And the stoppage called here from the Akron coaching staff. John Gross in his fifth season here at Akron, 70 and 49, a career record of 250 and 180. Turned 50 years old last month, served as a head coach at Ohio University from 2008 to 12. Was at Illinois for a while from 12 to 17 before taking over at Akron. He was fun to talk to. Very respectful and uh, very encouraged. He was happy to, I think, just get back in the swing of things, but he really valued the COVID year to spend more time with his family, gave him a new perspective. Yes, a lot of people had that opportunity. So Akron looking to get some points on the board. This is Ali Ali. Going to take JB to the basket. Stops up at the block, just possessed, holds it, and will kick it back out. Akron will recycle shot clock at 16. Driving to the left is Xavier Castaneda, and he will draw the foul to stop the clock at 17.46 to go. Uh, Isaiah Cottrell stepping out, trying to double, got out of position, and that's one thing you don't want to see your big guy do, and that's pick up a foul 28 feet away from the basket. Inbound comes from Dawson into the hands of Ali Ali. Average seven points per game last season. Good role player, tough player. Castaneda, jump pass on his drive to the basket. Now swinging to the bucket. Clark will kick it out. And that's going to drop in. Akron on the board. Well, that was a tough shot by Clark. Absorbed some contact, still knocked that shot down. Mountaineers back the other way. This is Gidrian Johnson after the bucket from Clark. McNeil isolates Jalen Bridges. Puts it in for another two. Nice cut by Bridges. Came off a Cottrell screen right there and made a nice cut. Sean McNeil with an excellent pass. Bridges with five, Sherman with four. The West Virginia advantage nine to two as the student section and the rest of the Mountaineer faithful begin to pick it up here. An energetic WVU Coliseum. Step back is off the mark, bouncing rebound. Bridges gave it up and it's put in by Michael Dawson, the Huntington, West Virginia native. Is excited to be in Morgantown, has a bunch of family here to watch him, and makes it a 9-4 game. Tough play by Bridges, really didn't have any place to go with the ball. You never want to throw it right back under your basket, though. Tough break. Taz will flip it up high to Kedrian Johnson. On one screen, will bullet that pass across. Sherman. Oh, Sherman! The sidestep knocks it down. It's a three and it's seven points for Sherman, 12-4. Absolutely nothing wrong with the defense by Akron that time. That was just a good, good shot by a good, good player. Ali to the basket for Akron. Getting a piece of it was Bridges. Rebounded by Cottrell. Mountaineers up the floor with a patient pace. Sherman wants it again. That time too short off the front of the rim. Rebounded by Akron Xavier Castaneda. Six foot junior from Chicago. USF transfer has two years of eligibility left and a whistle and Cottrell will pick up the foul. Driving that one in that time, Garvin Clark, the freshman from Euclid, Ohio. So there's a timeout on the floor. It's West Virginia 12, Akron four with 15.34 to go here in our first half. We'll step aside. You're watching Big 12 now on ESPN+.
Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum, West Virginia 12, Akron 4 is our score, and a guy who made his imprint at Akron, Bob Huggins, 97 and 46 record, part of the Akron Sports Hall of Fame, and uh, yeah, he did really make his mark. Okay. Yeah, I went to a number of games with Huggins at Akron, he really did a great job, got that program going. Mountaineers shooting 83%, they are 5 of 6 from the floor as it starts right now. Taz Sherman, 7 points in the game, he's 3 of 4 from the floor as we get restarted here. K.J. Walton in the game for Akron. He'll go tough to the basket. Dispossessed, picked up, and missed. Aziz Bandago couldn't get it to fall. Mountaineers back the other way. Here's Sean McNeil. And McNeil going to take a tough two, and it rims in and out, rebounded by Akron. Ali to Bandago. Down the baseline, and going to be a foul called against West Virginia's Damon Kerrigan, 6'9", senior from Boston, Massachusetts. Started 21 games last season at Florida International where he averaged seven points and six rebounds. He's in the game for West Virginia now. And here's what West Virginia is getting its offense from. Tash Sherman's been all over the place. He's almost on fire. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, Mountaineer fans held their breath wondering whether or not Taz Sherman and Sean McNeil were going to return. And boy, are they glad to see those guys on the court. And so far, so good for the Mountaineers as the first free throw falls in for K.J. Walton, who's playing in his seventh year of college basketball. And how do you get there, you ask? Well, a couple red shirts, a couple injury eligibilities, and then you get the COVID year, and that's where we're at. So the guy has certainly played his fair share of college basketball games, but speaking of the coaching staff, Coach Gross, and, uh, you know, practice gets pretty tiresome after a while all that time. I was looking for a streak of gray hair when they told me a guy had played for seven years. I didn't know. McNeil couldn't get the three to fall. And it's taken away once again. West Virginia 12, Akron 6. Tough take to the basket, and a jump ball is going to be whistled. It was Sherman getting involved on the defensive side. Jump ball there for K.J. Walton. And we'll get Malik Curry and Gabe Osaboyan into the game for West Virginia. It'll be Bridges taking a seat along with Kedrian Johnson. So this is a good game really to experiment with the group, see what you've got. You play these games. This is an exhibition, a charity exhibition, to get better, see a new team, see somebody new. Just stop practicing your guys after a while who don't know what you're going to do. McNeil waiting. And recycled here for Malik Curry, the senior from Willington, Delaware. Old Dominion transfer into the West Virginia program. Now. Yeah, well, yeah, Malik Curry came in. Hug said we needed some uh, you know, additional uh, help at the point guard spot. And that's what he came in for. Now there's that energy by Gabe Osiboyan inside, rooting around and getting that offensive rebound and getting fouled as well. K.J. Walton will pick up the foul, and that's the effect of Gabe Osiboyan. He's going to give you 100% every single time. Osa Boyan, a nice change of pace coming off the bench. We were talking with Coach Huggins before this game, and you'd love to get him out there as part of your starting five, but sometimes it's not about who starts, it's who makes an impact one and when. Well, and, and Gabe has a tendency to get in foul trouble, so he didn't want that to happen. This is Curry looking for the bank, and ripped down out of the air by Ali. 12-6 game, past the five-minute mark here in Morgantown, the WVU Coliseum. Picking it up, they like what they see, but this is Ali. The swing pass down the middle. Walton stopped by Osa Boyan. His breakout pass into the hands of Curry. Jump pass, Sherman wants it again. And Sherman shot, falls in. That's what you call a shooter's roll. Nine for Sherman, leading the game. Damon Kerrigan with a big play inside just now. He was one of the leading shot blockers in the country last year, and that's what West Virginia brought him in for, a rim protector. You're speaking of that foul trouble for yeah. Osa Boyan, Gabe will pick up that one. Yeah, Gabe needs to know when to throttle it back, you know, because he can pick up some quick ones, and he doesn't help you on the bench. He's got to be on the floor with that energy. Osa Boyan, part of that all-Big 12 defensive team, averaged about 17 minutes a game. That's less than half per contest, and almost a takeaway there for Malik Curry making his imprint early. Yep, you saw Kerrigan just now go up and make that block, and that's what they need him to do. Tribble, no look past the three ball on the way. Knocked down by Brian Trimble, Jr., the 6'2 junior from Kansas City, Missouri. All 
Mack last season, honorable mention, averaging 12 points per game. And Akron has made it a 14-9 game. Mountaineers by five at the 13-10 mark in half number one. Jim Trimble, the only guy double figures uh, back on the team this year. And Osaboyan draws the foul. Bandago, the freshman center from Senegal, standing at seven foot tall, will pick it up. And free throw is coming up. Second team foul on Akron. So it's Gabe at the free throw line. I'm sorry, this is uh, Ron Kerrigan, yep. Kerrigan and uh, Paulie Paulcap were brought in to try to fill that void at center left, you know, as uh, Culver. It, these guys aren't scorers. What Bob Huggins wants them to do is rebound. Somebody's got to pick up that rebounding slack that Culver left, you know, they're going to get better offensively, but initially that's what they're brought here for, and that's the rebounding. Second free throw from Kerrigan misses, and we stay at 15 to nine. Gabe lucky not to pick up a third foul. And a 10 second call against Akron. Coach Gross losing it over by his bench. He wanted a foul, as you said, Bake. Yeah, and, and really, you know, had that whistle blown, I don't think many people could have argued with it. Now, Gabe, for all that intensity, as I said, really has to be careful not to pick up cheap ones. Mountaineers get the inbound. This is Malik Curry. Again, from Old Dominion, led the Monarchs in scoring steals. Second team All-Conference USA. And almost a takeaway there for K.J. Walton. It'll stay with West Virginia. Malik Curry, as you said, yeah, he did lead ODU in, in scoring. He, the thing that I think Hugs wants out, he had averaged 3.6 assists a game. And that's what they have to have with these shooters, somebody that can penetrate and pitch and get that ball to your shooters. And depth at the guard position is always something to value. Sherman, game's leading scorer so far, steps into a long two. He gets it again. Taz Sherman, 11 points already, not even halfway through the first half. So patient, took his time, didn't rush anything. Well, you can tell the experience and the confidence that he has. 17-9, the West Virginia advantage. Double team comes, ripped away by Osaboyan, and keeps it alive. Sherman, the stutter step, the kick. Curry, short two, gets it to fall. 10-point West Virginia lead, and Malik Curry will open his West Virginia account. Nice play by Curry. Took his time, a little head fake. Didn't try to get all the way to the rim. Pulled up and took that 10-footer. Mountaineers shooting lights out so far at 62%. And defensively dogged right now. The double team again. That'll open the jump pass. Far side for Tribble. And again, Gabe Osaboyan able to force the turnover. Out of the hands of Freeman. And that'll bring us to another timeout. Coach Gross wanting to stop things here in Morgantown. West Virginia 19, Akron 9. 10-point lead for the Mountaineers. Stay with us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+.
Coming up on ESPN Plus tomorrow, Iowa State and West Virginia Mountaineers looking to knock off number 22, 2 Eastern, the kickoff for that one. And then the Big 12 Soccer Championships start Sunday at 12.30 Eastern, only on ESPN Plus. West Virginia Coliseum alive once again. Andrew Caridi and Warren Baker with you. 19 to nine, our score with 11.34 to go here in half number one. Happy to be with you. Strong performance so far by West Virginia's Taz Sherman. He's got 11 points. Now this is a, uh, a charity exhibition, so the points don't count, but in the game they do. And a Taz Sherman bucket again, 13. And see his ability to shoot the basketball got that bucket for him. They came out to guard him tight. He's so quick. One step, he was to the basket before the defender knew what happened. Easy layup. Halfway to his career best. He had 26 against Baylor last year. Akron now looking to answer in a 21-9 game. Bandago into the hands of McNeil. West Virginia gets the takeaway. And McNeil, the one-touch pass. This is Polly Polycap, transfer from DePaul. I like that. Now to Sherman. <laughs> And there's Pauly Cap. Great feed from Sherman. Mountaineers now five of their last five from the floor, a 9-0 run. Excellent pass by Sherman. Not only is he scoring, he's doing a good job of finding everybody on the floor and distributing. 23-9, the West Virginia advantage. Pass slipped in size to Bandago. Ordered there by Pauly Cap. There's his defensive ability loose on the baseline and escaping through two and scoring, K.J. Walton. Able to get it to fall, finally breaking that West Virginia run, the 23 to 11. Taz away from traffic. There's Bridges and then McNeil. Mountaineer shooting 67%, 10 of 15 from the floor, Akron 44%. Mountaineers have forced seven turnovers already as well. McNeil, shot clock at three from way downtown. Off the mark. Sean had to force that shot up because the shot clock was, uh, was about to run out. But I don't think it'll be unusual to see him shoot some of those in real time. Hugs lets him have a, a free reign whenever he wants because he knows once he gets on the roll what he can do. Sherman out of the game, and Kobe Johnson will come in. Garvin Clark as well for Akron. So a lot of expectations for two and white for West Virginia. Kobe Johnson, the freshman from Canton, Ohio. Coach Huggins really likes his game. He certainly does. Said he has, he's going to be a really good one. Might have the best ball security on the ball club as far as not turning the ball over. And has some of those intangibles as well. Toughness, stick to and a whistle and an offensive foul, a push off. As they will pick up Xavier Castaneda for that one. Stay with us in just a couple of moments. We'll, uh, bring a guy named Fran onto the broadcast and uh, we'll get his thoughts on the Big 12, some interesting developments in college basketball in general and obviously want to get his breakdown of this, this particular West Virginia group. Yeah, he knows a little bit about basketball, doesn't he? Yeah, just a bit. There he is. I think you guys know him. 23 to 11. And Curry aggressively through two will pick up the foul call. And they'll get Enrique Freeman, the 6'7 sophomore, on the call. Sherman back into the game. It's McNeil going for a seat. McNeil in the game so far 0 for 4. He's 0 for 3 from downtown. Sometimes when a good shooter is struggling like that early on, sit him for a couple of minutes, stick him back in, and, you know, he may, may get on fire. I've seen that happen a lot of times. Curry, aggressive take to the basket. Just left that one short, ripped down by Freeman. Here come the zips. Step in three ball, up and out, offensive board. Partially blocked by West Virginia. It was Bridges there, and finally pulled down by DeMond Kerrigan. Sherman trying to dribble through traffic, a little too aggressive. Floating pass, ripped right away. Malik Curry. Going to kick it out. Sherman. Taz, hand in his face, left it short. Zips over midcourt. Clark will draw the foul yeah, against see, Malik Curry. We've seen some pretty sloppy basketball all over the last minute or so. Six turnovers for Akron in the last five minutes. And uh, you're right, Bake. Scoring drought of two minutes and 18 seconds for West Virginia as well. Kedrian Johnson back into the game for West Virginia. 
23 to 11 game here at the WVU Coliseum. Andrew Caridi and Hall of Famer Warren Baker with you. Charity exhibition game here in Morgantown. Benefiting the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Endowment Fund. So it's for a good cause. What a job Huggs has done with that fund. Floated up the floor and lay it up and in. Kobe Johnson. There he is. Yeah, but give DeMon Kerrigan a lot. That was an excellent, excellent pass. West Virginia looking like a pretty fluid in sync group, which uh, seemingly was going to be a challenge this year. But one game is one game, and so early on, can't make much of it. Another turnover here for Akron. As that is given away by Ali Ali. All right, Fran will join us when we come back. Mountaineers 25, Akron 11 with 7.35 to go in half number one. Stay with us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back, West Virginia 25, Akron 11. Tash Sherman has 13 points for the Mountaineers. As we see some game stats for you right now, Mountaineers 11 of 19 from the floor. Akron just four of 12, the Zips also committing 10 turnovers already. We're at the 735 mark here in half number one. Andrew Caridi and Warren Baker with you. Happy to be with you on ESPN Plus. Happy to get a fully packed WVU Coliseum with you. And guess who we found roaming about Fran Frischilla is with us. Fran, happy to find you, man. And yeah. uh, what, what's it like to be back in uh, an environment like this? I'm it's, sure you're excited. It's awesome. By the way, uh, Bake, he sounds familiar. You know? I know he does. <laughs> I don't... Uh, it's great. It's great to be here. Watch these guys. It's a new uh, Mountaineer team off to a good start, playing hard, good defense. And uh, we got a crowd here, which is phenomenal, Andrew. Absolutely. That's the trademark, right? Well, we want to get your take. We know you're bouncing around. We know you're all over the place. So yeah. what, do you, what do you make of the Big 12 this season? It's going to be as good as ever. You know, especially now that uh, transfers are eligible right away. A lot of teams have taken advantage of it. Coach Hugg's got a few, including that guy right there, Carrigan. And uh, it's going to be, an, you know, the Big 12, Bake, has always been an old league. Uh -huh. You know, for every Kevin Durant or Trey Young, it's the Javon Carters and uh, Buddy Heels that stay around a while. When you add that mix to the transfers this year, it's a very old league, and it's going to be a very talented league. Yeah, Fran, what do you think about the transfer portal? top to bottom there. It's the way, you know what, uh, old guys like you and I, we talked about it today at the shoot around, we got to get used to it. Yeah, that's right. You're and, right. Uh, you know, it's good for the kids to have the freedom to move around, but 
it hurts continuity, as you know. Um, and also it hurts guys. I don't, I don't mind kids transferring, but sometimes you got to fight through a little adversity early in your career. You know what I'm talking about. Sure. And uh, so that's there's some unintended consequences that I think are going to be good and bad. Right. Yeah, you know, uh, it used to be kids really worked and stepped up against a little adversity. Now they just, you know, pick up pack the bags and go someplace else. You hope that's not the case. Some kids do that and other guys do hang in there, but right. it's a little easier to kind of escape than maybe it used to be when you had to sit out for a year. Kerrigan makes one of two, and here comes Akron once again. The score, West Virginia 26, Akron 11. We've had some movement in the Big 12, though, as far as who's where and uh, what is where, so expand on that a little bit. Well, you know what? We uh, Last year we had six Final Four coaches out of ten, and uh, that's good hustle there by Kerrigan. I like his energy so far. Yeah, that's not the right. Yeah. Now Mears and, get the tip in from Jalen Bridges. And uh, Jalen Bridges has filled out a little bit. You know, I, I always pick one guy that might be my favorite. Uh -huh. And it's been Jalen since he arrived a couple of years ago, and it's, it's good to see him. But, uh, you know, Andrew, it's the same old story. Six of the ten coaches in this league are final four-level coaches. Mon Kruger retired. Chris Beard did the Texas two-step. But then we had... Uh, Porter Moser to Oklahoma, another Final Four coach. So the coaching in this league is always stellar. Obviously, there's one Hall of Fame coach. There's another guy going in, and I think Scott Drew's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, someday. sure, sure. Is, is this year Hugs year? I know I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah. I, I think so. It has uh, to be. It has to be, yep. I, I think so. I mean, unless they're waiting for him to get a 1,000 wins. <laughs> <laughs> I know we don't want to see that. No, that's right. Hey, Fran, let me ask you about, what do you think about the, the N, uh, NIL? Same thing as the transfer thing, uh, Warren. I think you just got to get used to it. I think there's a lot of good things about it, the kids being able to, you know, maybe make a little pocket change for their name, image, and likeness. Uh, you just don't want kids to make that the sole reason they pick a school. But, hey, I, it's a new era, and I, I'm all for it, as long as we can put it in its perspective. Well, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Provi providing it can be done in a way that, that, that is fair. And but I, I, just, I just worry about little things like that. But it's going to take some time. Yeah. A lot of those quarterbacks who got the – whoa, look at this. Oh. Wide open opportunity for Akron and laid up and in. Easy pickings for K.J. Walton. Now, on a long-term basis, can you project what that might develop into NIL, transfer portal? I mean, it's it's kind of wide open, right? Unintended consequences, yeah. Andrew. Bo both good and bad now, so we have to see it all play out. But, uh, yeah, it's the new reality. There you go. Mountaineers extending their lead. And it goes for two. Kobe Johnson. Freshman. 30 yeah. to 13. Boy, Hugs is really high on him. Yeah, really, I think. Really high. I think that's a young man from Canton McKinley. Yes. That's a place when I was coaching in Ohio, uh, we spent a lot of time at Canton McKinley. Oh, did you? <laughs> Back in the day, a lot of great players have come out of there. And this kid, of course, nobody knows Northeast Ohio like Coach Hugs. No, so. you're right. Exactly. More on Kobe Johnson, Canton McKinley's all-time leading scorer. Mm. 1,566 points, averaging 21 per game. At the free throw line now, this is K.J. Walton, who's made his rounds for him. Yes, he has. Started at Missouri, then the ball stayed. And I talked to Coach Gross before the game. I, now, the, the score is not indicative. They've got, they're going to have a very deep, talented team. There's a freshman out there, number 21, uh, from Senegal. I think he's going to be an outstanding player someday. But this is a good test for Coach Huggs, you know, and the team, in the arena, with the crowd, because I think Akron's going to be a good team in the match. Yeah. Yeah, the big guy only played seven games last year, so he's got a long way to go. But yeah. you can see the way he runs and the way he handles himself. Yep. That, that the poten uh, potential is there. Offensive foul called against Akron. Possession was Virginia. And, yeah, the COVID year really made it difficult for Aziz Bandago to get yeah. over here. When you start behind in any capacity whatsoever, even with injury, even with fitness, it's going to be tough. So yeah. really uh, starting from scratch for him. West Virginia took a charge right there, and my first reaction was, Where, where's Gabe over the boy? But Gabe was on the bench. I think Gabe keeps those guys after practice so they can do that, you know. I, I don't think they did that when you played. Did no, they, they didn't. We, you, just, we just got all the way. You got extra shots up. You didn't, you didn't <laughs> practice charges. No, no. See the turnover number for Akron, 14 mm. already. One of the trademarks of the West Virginia oh. philosophy. How about Taz Sherman going for it there? Pick up his own miss and draw the foul. Why do I think Taz Sherman has a chance to, like, maybe, I don't know about leading the league in scoring, but he's going to be right up there. He's, yeah. a, he's a bucket getter. Yeah, I saw your interview uh, at the uh, Big 12 uh, 
you know, a, a con, uh, press day, and you were talking to him about that, and yeah. he can very easily be one of the best guards in the league. I think so. I think so. And, you know, Coach Huggs gives him a lot of freedom uh, to go get some shots, and he doesn't abuse it. Right. I think he's going to have a big, big year. Taz has got 14 already, but then that's a whole new conversation. The COVID senior year, which some opting to take, some not opting to take. What's your opinion on that? I like it. You know, there was an ESPN announcer last year that was talking about Taz coming back and pretty much mentioned it every game. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And uh, I think he made a good choice. I think he's going to have a – I think he's going to be one of the best guards in the country and, and score a lot of points and then, you know, help his professional future, whether it's – you know, the NBA are overseas because he's come back a year. Yeah, so far so good for Taz. He's got 15 in the West Virginia advantage. 32-13, 4.30 to go. Half number one. Fran's with us. Fran, will we see you in Morgantown quite a few times this I, year? I haven't got the full schedule yet, mm. Bake, but I'm hoping so. You yeah. know how much I love uh, oh, yeah. coming down here. And a lot of people don't realize I spent six years in Athens, Ohio, just a couple hours away oh, at Ohio right. U. So I know this area well. I love the people. I love the fan base. And, uh, of course, Coach Huggs and I go back to probably 1981 or 82 when we were, we used to be young coaches. <laughs> <laughs> Trimble gets the put back there. And under four minutes to play here in half number one. There's a man of the moment, Taz Sherman. He wants it. He's mm. got it. Yep. Sherman with 18 points. And again, like I said earlier, there are times you can play great defense, but great players are going to make shots. I agree. I agree, Bake. He yeah. can, and he can go get his shot. Yes, he can. And Bridges will pick up a foul for West Virginia, and that will bring us to the break. Fran Fraschilla, thanks for taking the time. And I know you don't get to watch many fan, uh, games as a spectator, but I guess enjoy it now. I know you'd rather be on the headset. but No, no it's fun. I, I get to do my homework. When I come, <laughs> when I come back right. in January and February talking to you guys, I'll have a little better he, opportunity. He, he's looking for a place to get some good pepperoni I'm going to go look for there. one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Business trip. We appreciate the time. You got hey, it. Take care, Fran. All right, West Virginia 35, Akron 15. Back after this on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Twenty-point lead for West Virginia, 35-13. The Mountaineer advantage, and there's going to be a rebirth for this West Virginia program. Check it out. All the newcomers for the Mountaineers this season: Kerrigan, Curry, Polycap, Johnson, King, Okonkwo, and Wilson. Yeah, Okonkwo had a uh, injury, broken foot. He's just now coming back. There are big debates as to whether or not he's going to sit the year out and, or try to come back. I think Hugs is leaning to letting him sit out the year and get stronger, learn the offense, and then come back. But he, when he's ready to go, he is going to be a force. Yeah, absolutely. And as we've mentioned before, that's a long process to get game ready, and you certainly don't want to waste anything. Polycap with two points in this game. Got four points for Johnson as well. Curry's got two. Kerrigan's got two. So 
They're making an impact early as we get back to the action. Aziz Bandago, who mentioned before, he's got high hopes from this Akron coaching staff. Freshman from Senegal, product of the NBA Academy. Really raw, but is able to knock that free throw in. Joined the team last January, played seven games, got a seven foot five inch wingspan, high and mobile. Mobile, probably the biggest key for a guy with that size. Yeah, that's exactly right. So Akron cuts into this West Virginia lead. 35-17, Akron shooting 40%, Mountaineers at 52%. West Virginia has put up 27 shots to Akron's 15. And McNeil, the fading layup wouldn't go. Quick break out here for the Zips. Walton to the bucket, kicked it back out late. It's a good option, and the layup falls in. Scored by Garvin Clark. Yeah, West Virginia had three guys go for that layup. The two of them fell down. Clark got the ball and had an easy layup. Akron's not giving up. They're going to sit here and fight. There's three minutes left in the half and uh, down 16, but certainly showing you that they have some comeback ability. A lot of basketball left to play, but Akron has already turned the ball over 14 times. Pushing up a three was well, West Virginia's Kobe Johnson. Couldn't get it to fall. Good effort there by Kedrian Johnson. McNeil kicks it, bridges, in and out. Rebound from Ali Ali. So nearing halftime here at the WVU Coliseum. Ali, swing pass. Clark steps through a couple. Good ball movement from Akron, open look. Not taken advantage of, missed by Trimble Jr. and fouled. Here's the Akron guard heading to the bucket. And that'll be Clark shooting two. Yeah, a long three by Akron, no good. West Virginia kind of standing around, rebound comes off. That's going to be a thing that's going to be a, you know, West Virginia is going to have to work on the entire year. And that's getting up there, getting the rebounds, trying to pick up where Culver left off last year, getting the boards. Bridges picks up the foul. And Isaiah Cottrell back into the game for JB. And the second one gets a good bounce as well. It's Mountaineers with Cottrell, Johnson, Johnson, Kobe, and Kedrian. And then you've also got Senny Njai out there for West Virginia along with Sean McNeil. Final two minutes of our first half. Andrew Caridi and Warren Baker with you. Kedrian Johnson inside. McNeil falling away, falls it off the glass. Nice shot by McNeil. Had he gone up for a layup, it might have been blocked. He just took his time and laid it off the ice. Went down for him. Sean McNeil gets his first points of the game. 37-21 Mountaineers, 140 left in half number one. Ali wanted to go baseline. Good help defense there by Senny Njai, sophomore. Wow. Big shot. Michael Dawson, 6'5 sophomore from Huntington, gets it to fall, and Coach Huggins wants the timeout. It is the Mountaineers 37, Akron 24, 127 to go in half number one. Stay with us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Welcome back in, Mountaineers, 37, Akron, 24. Did they catch me whistling Ozzy Osbourne on the way back in? Maybe No, they didn't. Okay, cool. I was singing along. Mountaineers up 13 points, 127 to go. Here in half number one, West Virginia forcing 14 turnovers in this game. Probably could be up a little bit more big. If West Virginia has anything special, I'd like to see Cottrell get the ball down low. Get in and see if you can't get him in the act. Gonna have to have that big man be able to score. 
Johnson turns at the foul line. Tough shot, couldn't get it to fall. And coming across to rip that out of the air, Michael Dawson. Dawson just scored for Akron and uh, loose end catches Kedrian Johnson. Offensive foul, possession Mountaineers, 56 seconds to go. Wow. That's one of those odd calls where de definitely nothing in that from Michael Dawson, but you do have to protect yourself. And right. that was a quick lash across the face of Kedrian Johnson. Yeah, Kedrian stuck his nose in there and got, got poked. Uh, and he's going to come out of the ball game. Athletic trainer Randy Metter will yeah. escort him to his respective position. That'll bring Malik Curry back into the ball game. Malik Curry has played hard for West Virginia, so. Again, I'd really like to see something set to see if he couldn't get yeah. Cottrell, whether it be because he is such a good outside shooter, whether it be something from the perimeter or something down low. I mean, my goodness, the man is 6'10". Throw it in there and let's see what happens. But right now, West Virginia, if they're going to be successful this year, they're going to have to get some production out of him and the rest of those guys in the post. It can't just be one guy. Taz Sherman, 18 points in this game. Career high of 26 came against Baylor last season. He is on fire, 7 of 10 from the floor. Outside of him, Bridges with 7, Curry 2, Kerrigan 2, Polycap 2, McNeil 2, Johnson with 4. Officials at the scorer's table looking down. Yeah. I don't think there's anything at all that, uh, that looked flagrant about that at all. Here's the upcoming schedule for West Virginia. Oakland on November 9th. We'll have a call on that one along with Eastern Kentucky after a bit of a break. Then Bellarmine, Radford, and Youngstown State. All of those games here on ESPN+. Plus. So subscribe and commit. It's great products. We've got more action as well. WV Women's Soccer Team in the Big 12 Tournament. But this is the upcoming schedule for the Mountaineers. Just under a minute to go here on Darius Nichols will bring his Radford Ball Club yes. in. That'll be a big day for him being a former Mountaineer. That's something that I'm sure he's looking forward to already. We do have some games within that ESPN Plus schedule. The opener against Oakland coming up on November 9th, and then three days later, Pitt here at the WVU Coliseum. We'll have fans back for that one, and you know what that means. Backyard brawl in Morgantown taking on whole new life. Man of the moment, Sherman. Malik Curry. Sherman, the shot clock at six. Taz, going to feed that one inside, missing everybody. Good hard defense played by Akron. They've got it possession. Was. Taz trying to see if Cottrell had posted it up, but de uh, defensively, they had stopped him, cut him off. Really, Taz had no place to go with the ball. Turnover, West Virginia. Akron down 13. Not by as many as 20 in this game. Ali, short two. The defense there from Cottrell. Shot clock is off. 19 seconds to go in half number one. Mountaineers will look for the final look. Malik Curry. The new guy, Sherman. Get it in his hands. For good reason, Taz Sherman wraps off the first half with a bucket. 20 first half points for Taz Sherman as he leads West Virginia to a 39-24 lead at the half. The advantage is 15, Bake. What a performance from your fifth-year guy. Well, yep, and you know, you look for that out of your fifth-year guy. He's looking around now saying, okay, who's going to step up and help me here? You know, but... Uh, as good as Taz is shooting the basketball, you're not going to be able to depend on that every ball game. So, but uh, it's good to see him off and running like he is. An enjoyable first half for the fans back at the WVU Coliseum. Both teams heading into the locker room for the break. Our score, West Virginia 39, Akron 24. We'll be back after the half for half number two on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Thank you. 
the John Pizza Scoring Year. Today's first contestant is Aiden. Good luck. Fans, for your halftime entertainment, please give a warm welcome to the WBU Hip Hop Dance Team. Here it is. Season tickets on 
back to the WVU Coliseum. Andrew Caridi and Warren Baker with you. You're watching Big 12 now on ESPN Plus. Half number two coming at you soon. West Virginia 39, Akron 24. And uh, Bake, welcome back. Taz Sherman, that was the story of the first half. 20 points on 8 of 11 shooting, but the West Virginia defense also dogged, forcing 15 turnovers. Yeah, they did. They came out aggressive. Akron turned the ball over the first three times they headed down court. And uh, West Virginia really, really capitalized and got that lead. Taz Sherman with a tremendous first half. I'm sure Bob Huggins would like to see that scoring a little more balanced, though. He's got 20. Next best uh, is uh, Bridges with seven, and he got those early. So let's see if West Virginia can get that balance scoring a little more. On the other end for Akron, six points for Walton and six points for Clark. Overall, between both of these teams, West Virginia shooting 48% and Akron shooting at 42%. So the players on the floor for West Virginia, Curry, Bridges, Sherman, Cottrell, McNeil, Clark, Castaneda, Dawson, Ali, and Freeman for Akron as we are back underway. Akron in the dark blues and West Virginia in the white uniforms. Wide open look for Ali to begin the second half and off the back iron, rebounded by Akron with a double dribble. Yes, it was a double dribble, but again, Akron on that offensive board, offensive glass, that's going to be something that West Virginia has to deal with the entire year. Got to have five guys go to that board and get the rebound. Good game so far for West Virginia, but also Michael Dawson. He played three seasons at Huntington High School and one at Huntington Prep. And Sean McNeil gets that one to fall. McNeil from Bridges. Sean McNeil able to rub his man off the screen. That's the second or third time West Virginia has been able to do that. Akron not adjusting to it. McNeil with just four in this game. And a strong move from Freeman under the basket. Takes a couple of bounces possessed by West Virginia. Sherman swinging away. Will draw the foul and shoot two. Free throws coming up as they will pick up Ali for the personal. That'll be his first. Malik Curry at the point for West Virginia, and they thought that he might be the guy that would step in and take over that position this year. Uh, um, obviously, um, yeah, he's got to get acclimated to everything that's going on, but I think Huggs is looking for him to really step up and be that leader. Yeah, that's going to be the main challenge for this West Virginia team is we saw all those newcomers on the graphic that we showed, and uh, you got to get them indoctrinated. you got to get them within the system, and that's such a long process. Sherman misses the first yeah, we saw Keijer and Johnson start the ball game. Keijer has been here. He knows the yeah. he knows the ropes and everything else. So it make Curry a while uh, take Curry a while. Wow, wow to see uh, Taz miss a free throw after the way he's been shooting the basketball. And Sherman makes one of two, give him 21 points. Big 12 honorable mention for Sherman last season scored in double figures in 21 games. His scoring average increased from five points in his first season to 13 in his last season. So just one of those things where, you know, this is a charity exhibition game, but, you know, sample size is, is the sample size right now. Yeah. And an offensive foul called against Akron. And it'll be yeah. picked up by Cottrell. Yeah, C Cottrell got good position inside. West Virginia came with full court heat, trying to get Akron in a running game. Akron comes down, charges. West Virginia gets the turnover. 42-24 Mountaineers. Malik Curry from Old Dominion. Now to Cottrell, working off that Achilles injury from last season. Wide open look. Got it. The freshman from Las Vegas, Nevada, will get his first point to the ball game. And an answer from Akron, it's Enrique Freeman. Miscommunication on the defensive end by West Virginia. Cottrell hits a big three, but West Virginia goes back, falls asleep on the defensive end, and Akron gets an easy one. Sherman, he does it again. Taz Sherman, 23 points. Good look from the Zips. Castaneda can't get it to fall. Mountaineers over midcourt. Taz is feeling it. Oh, is he feeling it? Oh. Count it up, that is three, number three. Taz Sherman has 26. It's one of those games if you're Taz Sherman. Does it have to end? 
Can we play all yeah. night? He ties his career best. At 26 against Baylor. Now this is a charity exhibition game. One that benefits the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Fund. Fourth time that West Virginia has played in a charity exhibition game. Played Albany in 2017 and then Penn State in 2018, Duquesne in 2019. So this does not account against any of the team's records or statistics. I want you look at what West Virginia has done and the impact it's had on the energy here in the WVU Coliseum as it will stay with Akron. The point is, even if the numbers don't matter, the momentum that you build does. It certainly does. Yeah, they, you know, your, your, your team is beginning to figure out who is who, what needs to be done. The only thing that I don't necessarily like about this, Taz Sherman just told the rest of the Big 12, I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a solid point. You know, Coach Gross for Akron tells us the 351 D1 teams want to compete for a championship. And Jalen Bridges wants to compete for a bucket there, knocked out of his hands. You know, but, they, uh, you know the competition level is, is, is going to be where it's at. Yeah. You know, you hear about the Euro step. Jalen just said that Euro yeah. step. They're going to let that go this year, the step back. Not going to call the walk. And uh, Jalen did that just now, just hit the, the ball knocked away. I love the move personally. I don't know where you stand on it. No, I agree. There's Cottrell again. Mountaineers extend their lead, 52-26. Anytime you can sort of slow down and throw a change up essentially on a break, that's a good looking move. Yes. Big block there from the Mountaineers, Jalen Bridges, and Sherman's fouled. Tribble will pick that up for Akron. Just about three minutes into half number two. Mountaineers running away with this one, as we'll see that foul again. Just a 15-point lead at the half for West Virginia. And they have increased that already. They have outscored Akron 13-2 here in half number two, a 7-0 run in the last minute and seven seconds. McNeil to Curry. Tough shot hits the side of the backboard, but does draw the foul. He'll go to the line to shoot two. Yeah, Greg Tremble got him with the body. You know, we're talking about Taz Sherman and the way he's shooting. There's going to be other nights like that, but it might be number 22 shooting like that for West Virginia yep. in Sean McNeil. So, so it's going to happen again. It may be JB, maybe Jalen Bridges. Taz is going to have his, but believe me, Sean McNeil is going to have a game like Taz has. A little more on Malik Curry as he misses the mark on free throw number one. Double figures in 19 of his 20 games. Scored over 20 points six times. Began his career at Palm Beach State. Second team all junior college. But uh, in Old Dominion League, is a little different than the Big 12. Yep. It's all Conference USA honors for him. But I think his effort has stood out to me more than anything else. And Akron almost giving it away here. West Virginia getting on the floor. It's Bridges. And we've got a whistle, and I believe West Virginia. I think Bridges was able to get a timeout. He got the timeout. 16.46 to go, half number two. It is West Virginia 53. The Zips, 26, we will step aside. Mountaineers ahead in the second half. You're watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus.
here's a look at some coaches who have made their mark on college basketball. Krzyzewski, Beheim, you know that guy. Coach Huggins getting 900 and heading into this season with the uh, opportunity to make some more history. Three more wins to tie Bob Knight for fourth place all time. Look, currently third in total victories among active coaches is Bob Huggins, but it's going to be a difficult challenge to win games for West I mean, it's always difficult to win games for West Virginia, but in a season where five of your top eight scores uh, now moving on. You know, one of the things, though, that, that's so impressive, Andrew, about that 900 wins, a lot of those guys that choose, uh, boy, Taz shot a foul on the three, that's the last thing you want to do to a guy that might miss one is foul him and let yeah. him go to the line. But uh, with Hugs, you know, the, the guys that you saw up there, it, those guys had a lot of five, four or five-star recruits. Mm -hmm. Hux has done that without having the luxury of having guys just walk in and say, hey, I want to play for you, you know. Those, some of those coaches there just picked whoever they wanted and they came. Hux hasn't done it like that. He really, really had to work and develop players to get where he is. Yeah, I was going to say, you don't get those numbers by accident. No. Well, he, there's no reason why he shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame this year. If he doesn't get in, I'm going to rent a bus and get a <laughs> group of people and go to Springfield and have a talk with some folks. Jeez. Two of two for Taz Sherman. And he continues to add to his total. 28 points, 10 of 13 shooting, 3 of 5 from 3, and now 5 of 6 from the free throw line. Give him a third, a 29 for Sherman. And the score, West Virginia 56, Akron 26. Yeah, I mean, it's a foregone conclusion at this point. And it was like that even a couple years ago, and maybe a couple years before that. Gabe Osaboyan picks up a foul. Now, that one was more of a ticky-tack touch foul. Hugs does not like the call at all. But again, you know, Gabe has to be able to stay out of foul trouble for him to be effective for West Virginia on the floor with that energy. Yeah, third personal on Gabe. He's there to rip down the rebound. Our officials in this one, Rick Crawford, Antonio Petty, and Greg Murley. Oh, Taz was looking for it there. Looked to finish with the left. Couldn't get it to fall. Mountaineers still working for it in the backcourt, but Akron able to break that pressure. Tribble underneath. Layup up and in for K.J. Walton. Fifty six twenty eight. Andrew Caridi and Warren Baker with you. Near the five minute mark of half number two. McNeil, nice move. Got the look. Got the triple. Sean McNeil. You cannot let that young man get set like that. Here's the Euro step again. That time from Akron's Greg Tribble. That's the West Virginia lead to 29 points. And yeah, you can't leave McNeil open. It's kind of been a dry night for him, though, overall. That was just his first three of the game. But McNeil, last season, averaged 12 points per game. It's 69 three-pointers, double figures 18 times. And we had a whistle before that was finished by West Virginia's Malik Curry. I have no idea what, what the stoppage in play was for. Timeout. And we had a West Virginia timeout before all of that. All right, we're moving on through. 15-13 remaining in half number two. Mountaineers 59, Zips 30 from the WVU Coliseum. You're watching Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus.
Mountaineers 59, Akron 30. Welcome back to the WVU Coliseum. Great showing of support here in Morgantown. So happy to see that again. So happy you could be with us. Andrew Creed and Warren Baker with you. And it is Taz Sherman's night, 29 points for the fifth year guy. 10 of 14 shooting, three of five from three, and six of seven from the free throw line. Bake, this is a strong performance from West Virginia to say the least, 29 point lead. We're at the 15-13 mark of half number two. Oh yeah, they've, had the, they've got obviously a lot of things to work on, but for the most part, it's been a pretty crisp game for the Mountaineers. They came out to play. This is an Akron team. In the last two years, most wins in the MAC. Cottrell had to get that one up. Look at the hard work from Gabe Osaboyan and Sean McNeil. Yes. All effort, all net, 62-30. I think Sean McNeil has a green light anywhere across, uh, over half court. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Hux told him to, I need you to shoot the ball. I need you to score. And we've got a whistle underneath. And another blocking foul on Gabe. It'll be four for him. And he'll come out of the game now. Damon Kerrigan, a transfer from Florida International, will jump into the contest. So, and you see Gabe now in the yank on the arm there from Coach Huggins, and just broke that plane. As Akron able to get it up by Walton, he converts. 62-32, Mountaineers by 30 points. This is Kobe Johnson. McNeil couldn't get it to fall. Big rebound by Bandago. Zips now working their way into this game, looking a little more comfortable on the offensive side sure. of this. Into traffic goes Greg Tribble, the sophomore from Cincinnati, and he'll draw the foul. Played in 21 games last season. Averaged four points, and he'll shoot some free throws. Hugs yelling at Key Jen Johnson, move your feet. Yeah, he got beat on the first step right there. As quick as Key Jen Johnson is, somebody shouldn't beat him off that dribble like that. Picked up the foul inside, so. Is it fair to say a faster team defensively for West Virginia? I mean, it's a smaller group maybe? Yeah, I think so. I basically just want to give some broad brush strokes sure. from the man himself, Warren Baker. <laughs> now, we, we've, we've seen a lot of time now. We, we, we've seen West Virginia, but I think it's about that time where we can start to make some generalizations. It's never too early for a hot take, Bake. No, that's right. Cottrell. Navigating, offensive foul. Yep. Just a little out of control, Bandago setting his feet. I'll tell you what, Bandago has done a lot of nice things for Akron, you know. Again, he's not going to be a big offensive presence, but he's long, he, he disrupts things when, you know, when you're shooting. You see him taking a charge. You know, a lot of seven-footers would say, you know, I'll block it. No, he set his feet and took a charge. That tells you that he's maturing. And there's just a warm feeling when you've got a guy in the team that you root for who plays his role and just does exactly. the things that need to be done. You're exactly right. Kedrian Johnson wearing a little bit of tape. He's defending Tribble right now after he caught that elbow high in the eye. Akron. Vandago blocked. And a little wag of the finger there from Damon Kerrigan showing his shot blocking capability. Well, uh, Kerrigan, that's exactly. He, West Virginia needed a rim protector. As good of a player as Derek Culver was, he was not a good rim protector. Given away there by the yeah. freshman Kobe Johnson. Johnson. Yeah, that wasn't a good decision. A little more on Kerrigan. Second in Conference USA in blocks last year. Second attempt here for the Zips. There's Kerrigan again. Hard nose play underneath. 12.47 to go. Half number two, Mountaineers 62, Zips 34. Here in this charity exhibition match at the WVU Coliseum and Kedrian Johnson. Uh, that bad that angle by Johnson, but Cottrell didn't help him at all. He really didn't spread out and get a good base. So two players that when they look at the film will say, my bad, both will say my bad. You know, you're talking about Kerrigan. He, coming out of high school, he was considered the best shot blocker in the country in high school basketball. That's a 
across the entire nation. Yeah, so. Yes. WVU's had some great shot blockers come through there. Neck of the woods. Sags, Dior Fisher. Yes. And another foul underneath. West Virginia has turned the ball over three times in the last two minutes and 36 seconds. And in that same time frame, they haven't scored a bucket. Kerrigan having a discussion with our official here, but they'll get the foul on Kobe Johnson. Kerrigan was second in the league last year behind Charles Bassey, who played for Western Kentucky, who went to the next level, was one of the best players in the league. So he, uh, he comes in with a, with a reputation of being a guy that can protect the rim. Now the chant. Six more years. <laughs> I love it. And uh, that's for K.J. Walton, who's played seven. <laughs> I don't know where they get six from, but. Good chant. Good. That was, that's a good, good, decent chant. <laughs> just, just good banter. Well, you know, as, as teams and, and schools find out about it, he's going to hear that all year. Yeah. WVU uh, Maniacs doing their research, too, big. <laughs> nice spin from Cottrell. McNeil on the baseline. Sean's got to pull that trigger quicker. Yeah. He had a shot. There's a freshman, Kobe Johnson. And a loop. Corralled there by Kedrian Johnson, who gets chopped up at the knees. Looks like Hill out of the line for two shots. A little out of control, but the intent was there. Mountaineers staying ahead in this one, shooting 52%. 62-35 is our score. Back after our break on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Coming up soon on Big 12 Now on ESPN Plus. Football tomorrow, number 22, Iowa State coming to Morgantown to take on the Mountaineers. Two o'clock kick for that in the Big 12 Soccer Championships. On the women's side of things, coverage starting Sunday at 12.30. The Mountaineer women's team will meet Baylor on their side of the bracket. And, uh, and I do do the uh, women's soccer games here for West Virginia as well. And that's going to be a wide open tournament. Expect Mountaineers to Make a deep run there, should be fun. Round Rock. 62-35. A 
the West Virginia advantage. They've turned the ball over, though, three times in the last three minutes. And uh, both teams going a little bit dry, but Hedrian Johnson looking to change that after he drew the foul prior to our break. And, oh, wrong. Everybody on the edge of their seat for that one. No points yet for Kedrian Johnson. Can't get it to fall, and Mench is almost clear. Kobe Johnson not going to commit to that, and West Virginia going to get the uh, get the possession there. Tipped off a finger of Ali Ali for Akron. Mountaineers shooting 52% in this game. Akron just 38%. Mountaineers have hit seven three-pointers on 18 attempts and have forced 19 turnovers out of the zips. McNeil, Cottrell, shot clock at 10. Kerrigan protects in the post. Cottrell, shot clock at four. Kerrigan lays out his man. Bandago again. I'll tell you what, Bandago has been very impressive, you know. You, you, you won't see it much in the stats just looking at them, but the coaching staff knows, and the Akron fans, I think, have something to really, really be, you know, you know, look forward to with this young man as he matures. And some big bodies banging underneath there. Bandago and Damon Kerrigan, 6'9 and 7 feet. Now Kerrigan had to do something with it. The clock was running down, and he tried to get to the hole. Bandago took the charge. He just throws that one up there, but he will draw the foul, so two free throws coming up. The man from Senegal, the center, Aziz Bandago. And, Bake, this is a exhibition game, but it allows this new group for West Virginia and obviously new acquisitions for Akron like Bandago, the ability to experience a game day, experience the routine, how to warm up, how to scout for it. And uh, Coach Gross telling us that he's treating this like their opener because let's be honest, it is. It's not like you're coming out here playing in front of the fans like this or in a road environment like the WVU Coliseum and being passive about it. No, came in last night, you know, spend the night in an unfamiliar bed, have a uh, shoot around this morning, everything like a normal game, and get those players acclimated to what's gonna happen. Actually, a fun little story is Akron stayed in Bridgeport last night. They were uh, coming to their location and their bus having a little bit of trouble and their bus broke down in Doddridge County. Oh, was that right? So they were stranded there for about two and a half hours. The assistant coach for Akron, Rob Fulford, was uh, telling us that story, but got some good West Virginia hospitality because they said uh, a number of people, Sean McNeil, going to get called for the offensive foul again, uh, came up to help him. Not many too, uh, too many, uh, you know, bus engineers <laughs> in Harrison County, Ritchie County, in that general location, but, you know, it's a thought that counts. Uh, you know, you mentioned Rob uh, Fulford. He started uh, Huntington Prep in Huntington, West Virginia. He's on the staff at Akron. Patrell couldn't keep it yeah. in. And, um, you know, a Marshall grad, but started Huntington Prep, and certainly West Virginia has benefited from the uh, some of the players at Huntington Prep. Give him a lot of credit for getting that underway. And... Um, has done a nice job and you know, is on that coaching staff there, but kudos to him for, for, for getting that program started. Garvin Clark to inbound for Akron, and Mountaineers will make a late switch. This is Malik Curry coming into the game for the battered Kedrian Johnson. You know, we see, we've seen some lulls in the Mountaineers offense and some not, not really good play. And that's the type of stuff that you really have to clean up before you get into Big 12 play. Another offensive rebound. West Virginia cannot have that happen. Now this is the third shot, third opportunity for Akron. And Freeman was the one to rip it down. Averaged nine rebounds per game last season. Freeman, that's 25 in the dark blue. Shot clock at three. It's Freeman underneath. Mismatch there with McNeil. has got to get it up, and he does. And it will count. Freeman with the bucket, 62-38. Nearing our halfway mark of half number two. A lot of basketball left to play. As Bake mentioned, a little lull in West Virginia's offense. They'll look to get it regassed here. Curry almost gave it up. The effort not going away for Akron. We asked Coach Gross about uh, Freeman yesterday. I said, you know, here's a guy that averaged nine rebounds a game last year. Well, 
There's a guy named Culver that averaged nine rebounds for West Virginia yeah. a game. And we saw what he had to do to get those. And he said, this kid is unique because he knows angles. He's relentless. And uh, you can't, you know, guys that rebound like that, you know, they make your team so much better. Bake, what was your mindset going into a rebounding? You mean you had a couple of those. My goal when rebounding, when playing, uh, I tried to get anywhere from, get three rebounds every 10 minutes. Okay. You know, three every 10 minutes, if that's the case, you average 12 a game. But three every 10 minutes, I said one offense, one defense, you know, one off the free throw line, just get three every 10 minutes. So you were you were doing advanced stats before they were cool well, without was, even knowing it. Yeah, that's what I, I tried to do, you know. And if you got if you get three, don't quit, go for four, but try to get. And and I've told some of the West Virginia players that don't try to go out and average 12, 13. Yeah. Just get if you're in there, get three every ten minutes or however long you're in, and, and see what happens. Only Curry able to knock down the first of a one and one, but also an aspect that Coach Gross was telling us about it. You want to you 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 need to want to rebound the basketball. You have to like doing it. Yeah, that's the desire. You know, it really doesn't take a lot of talent. You just got to go get it. <laughs> Selling yourself short a little bit, huh? <laughs> Curry gets them both. West Virginia again with some full court heat. Actually token pressure, really not full court man, not, not trapping at him. Seven team fouls for Akron, eight for West Virginia, so both teams in the bonus. Freeman from the corner, able to knock it down. It's a 23-point game, West Virginia 64, Akron 41, past our halfway mark in half number two. Cottrell. And Polly Polly Cap. Shot clock at seven here from Malik Curry. He's given sorts of space. And it's off the front of the rim. Ali Ali backed off off of him. Zips back the other way. This is Clark. Swung inside. Bandago. Turn to the inside. And tipped up into the hands of Sean McNeil. Good defense from West Virginia on the help. Yes, it was. Trail held his ground well that time. But Bandago, uh, Bandago goes to, with his left hand too. Another good thing that you see out of a big guy as young as he is. Polycap creating space for Sean McNeil. Bouncer off the front of the rim, could not go. Polycap occupies a lot of space. He's a big body there. Step in two pointer. Couldn't get it to fall. Missed there from Clark. Kobe Johnson. He's got room. Both teams are on fumes right now. Yeah. They've gone up and down right now. Oop. Late block call. Thought we were going to get a no call there. It would have been satisfactory for me, but. <laughs> Z's Bandago will pick up his third foul. And West Virginia will go back to the free throw line. In your experience, uh, fitness something that builds over the season? Yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, you, you can do all your, your conditioning and you know, before the season starts, but a lot of it comes, you know, with play, when, you know, know when to take a break and, and, and catch your win, that type of thing. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it does. Yeah, there's fit, and then there's game ready. Yeah, yeah, really. First one and one missed. Ali, oh, nice dish. Akron can't capitalize on the first opportunity, but they do with Enrique Freeman. Since I mentioned Freeman's name, I've seen him get five rebounds. Since I mentioned his name now. Yep. Freeman, one point off a double-double. He's got nine and 10. 64-43. Akron chipping away at this West Virginia lead of 21 points, but time running out. 7.40 to go, half number two. McNeil. Wants it, and can't get it to fall. Bandago, tough rebound underneath. Here come the zips. To the right wing. And Trimble Jr. with the misfire. Mountaineers, 64, Akron, 43. West Virginia, 
looking to seal this one out in Morgantown. Stay with us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. at the WVU Coliseum out near 64, Akron at 43. If you don't have ESPN Plus already, go and get it. Oakland, Eastern Kentucky, Bellarmine, Radford, Youngstown State, all exclusively on ESPN Plus. So a portion of that non-conference schedule for West Virginia can only be seen here. You know, I talked to Hux today, and uh, we were sitting around, and he said, you know, I, I watched Oakland play last night. He said, they're good. Yeah. He said, Oakland is going to come here. He said, they're really, really good. For those of you that might be wondering about, you know, where, where is Taz Sherman? Is he, Taz has ice on his leg. I saw, he, he got a little gimpy yesterday in practice. And uh, I told Andrew a while ago, I saw him run to the dressing room, but Doc Metter stayed out. So I knew it wasn't anything serious. Or I didn't think it was anything serious. But he does have ice on that calf. I think it's a, a precautionary thing. You know, he's fine, but uh, certainly... You don't want anything to happen to that young man. Yeah, Taz Sherman, 29 points in this game. I almost completely forgot that uh, you would observe that in the pregame shoot-around because obvious reasons. He's got 29 yeah. points in the game, was on fire, and, uh, you know, tied his career best in just about 23 minutes of the game. So we'll keep an eye on him. Malik Curry off balance. Shot clock at one, tip back toward the rim by Njai, and Akron able to pull down the rebound. Akron in this game. Much of their scoring coming from Walton. He's got 11 points, five for Trimble Jr., five for Dawson, and six for Clark. Deep three missed. Rebound ripped down by Kedrian Johnson. Now it's Curry. And Jai. Curry got his man to commit. Gonna pull up for a good looking two. Can't get it to fall. Rebounded by Enrique Freeman. And Freeman with nine points. That's his 11th rebound of the game. Ali Ali. Ali Oop for Bandago. Missed. Mountaineers. A little bit of soft legs here. Eudreen Johnson. A step to the left. Can't get it to fall. Rebound Bandago. It'll be his fourth rebound of the game. Gap opens up, and oh, it is boy. taken by Xavier Castaneda. 
5.45 to go in the game, 64-45. I would not want to be in film session tomorrow when Bob Huggins bring this, brings this up. Four new guys getting ready to come in. And Coach Huggins has seen enough. Two changes for Akron as well, Dawson and Walton. As this is just a substitution here, so clock stops at 5.34 to go. Mountaineer shooting percentage has dropped under 50%. They're now shooting just 46%, 23 of 50 from the floor. Akron, 36%, which uh, accurate depiction of our score line here. Rebounding, 33 to 28 advantage for the Zips. Not going to satisfy Coach Huggins, to say the least, but a 7 0 run for Akron over the last four minutes. Mountaineers over their last seven from the field. This is Kobe Johnson. Jamel King getting his first action in the golden blue. And Cottrell fighting for the rebound, gets it off. And Brian Trimble Jr. So possession stays with West Virginia. As yeah. you see Jamel King out there. Good hustle by Cottrell. Along with Taj Thweet. Decided not to reach for that basketball. Good decision. Got Taj Thweet uh, seeing his first action this evening. Thweet with the headband. Now on the perimeter. Cottrell gets the inbound. Kobe Johnson. Cottrell. And a whistle and a foul away from the play. 5.04 is where the clock stops. We'll get Michael Dawson for his third personal free throws coming up for West Virginia's DeMond Kerrigan. Kerrigan in this game, two points. Two of four from the free throw line, but has pulled down four rebounds and gets the first of a one and one. Nice looking stroke with the free throw line. Kerrigan just a 49% free throw shooter at Florida International. A guy that will contribute, he gets the second, seven points, six rebounds. And he averaged 66-45. West Virginia has its first points in a while. Under five to play. Contested through ball up and made. What a wow. shot. Brian Trimble Jr. 66-48, under five to go. Trimble started out at St. John's, came to Akron. They said the only uh, double uh, double digit score back from last year. Thweet, good pass inside to Johnson. Didn't commit to the take though. Tough shot from Johnson, and one. Uh, Jim Gross beside himself, one and a travel, didn't get the call. Johnson had to hit the brakes in the lane, but kept that pivot foot down and then able to knock the shot down and will get the bonus. Mountaineers get that lead back to 20, 68-48. That swirls out. Mountaineers that as a team is now 13 of 21 from the free throw line. Coach Huggins had stressed that point so many times, uh, not only last season, but uh, in preseason media sessions as well. Going back to a couple games last season where he just had to hit your free throws and it didn't happen. And that's not something that requires, you know, something in sync or a homogenous team. You just got to do your duty as an individual. That's exactly right. Kobe Johnson will find Damon Kerrigan. Bullet pass inside. There's Cottrell. Double pump. Too strong off the other side. Rebound loss, but collected by Akron. Nice cut by Cottrell. Kerrigan late getting him the pass. The pass should have been a little early and it would have made an easy shot for Louisiana. Good ball movement there from Akron, and it's Freeman to finish it off. Freeman now with that double-double, 11 points, 11 rebounds. 3.20 to go in this game. The charity game is as Virginia will maintain possession. That's off an Akron fingertip. 
That'll take us to another break. 3.13 to go in the game. Mountaineers 68, Akron 50. We'll take a quick break. Stay with us on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. Plus. Three minutes, 13 seconds, separating West Virginia from a, success, a successful charity exhibition. Andrew Creedy, Warren Baker with you. 18-point lead for the Mountaineers, heading into the final stretch. This is a charity exhibition game that benefits the Norma May Huggins Cancer Research Endowment Fund, so proceeds going toward that. And Coach Huggins not satisfied with his group, making four substitutions at the break. The total defensive lap. Uh, laps that, and I can't remember what Akron player was, just drove right down the middle of the lane, uncontested, laid it up, and nobody challenged him. Well, that certainly is not going to fly in Coach Huggins' book. So, is that my uncle? <laughs> Your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> that is the <laughs> voice. Big shot there from Cottrell. And Cottrell now with eight points in the game. Johnson, King, Kerrigan, Cottrell, and McNeil. On the floor for West Virginia, you've got Walton, Tribble, Clark, Bandago, and Freeman out for Akron in the final three minutes of the game. Your dad, what a quick turnaround. Get this over with, back at the, call, or at the uh, stadium first thing tomorrow morning. See if he can't bring a big win home for the, uh, for the football team. Yep. Mountaineers in Iowa State tomorrow, and uh, he wouldn't have it any other way, but. Oh, my. But he does get pretty tired. I bet he does. I've seen some of the excursions he had, to, he had to do. Speaking of that Mountaineers Iowa State game that can be seen on ESPN Plus, the meeting we got right now. So we'll stay here with uh, 2.39 to go in the game, and that's our promo here. Number 22 coming to Morgantown, 2 o'clock kick, and the Big 12 Soccer Championships as well starting Sunday at 12.30. Mountaineer women's basketball team, or a women's team will be participating in that as well. On the Mountaineer women's basketball team. Speaking of them, big, Boy, big performance. Big performance last night nice against West Virginia Tech. Yeah, yeah, they look they look sharp. Of course, I, you know, Coach Carey is like uh, Hugs. He, I'm sure he found a zillion things to uh, to critique, but uh, they've got a nice ball club, and you know, as long as they can stay healthy, I think they're going to have a good season. One thirteen to thirty three. Hello. Yep. Yeah, some women's basketball games on ESPN Plus as well. You've got St. Francis on November 16th and Kennesaw State, Bradford, and many more, including 
Big 12 Conference games. So the story of this game, West Virginia able to force 20 turnovers, 15 of those coming in the first half. So Mountaineers came out with a fire in this one. Taz yeah. Sherman, who's coming back for his encore season, using that fifth year of eligibility, 29 points in uh, really just a handful of minutes, 22. So that's about half the game. Yeah, did whatever he wanted to, got whatever shot he wanted. And as you said, didn't force anything, just played really good solid basketball. Whoa. Was oozing confidence, but that's a confident shot right there. Akron's Michael Dawson gets it to fall, the West Virginia kid out of Huntington. Makes it 71 to 53, scores outside of Taz Sherman. Bridges with seven, Cottrell with eight. Sean McNeil double figures, he finishes, well, has 10 for now. Johnson with six, Kerrigan with four, and Curry with five. McNeil looking to add to his total right now. For Akron, Freeman and Walton both have 11. Fadeaway missed there from Cottrell. Loose ball scooped up, Tribble. Kick back out, and year seven, K.J. Walton gets it to fall. Under two minutes to go, West Virginia 71, Akron 55. Boy, another situation where Akron just putting the ball down, you know, head down and going straight to the hole and getting an easy layup. That is, oof. Kobe Johnson showing some of that ball control at the return pass from Cottrell. Yeah, you said it, Bake. Oh, I mean, I, I can just imagine Hugs watching that film and how he'll be boiling. And DeMont Kerrigan will draw the foul against Bandago. He'll go to the line for two free throws with 1.26 to go in the game. This was a game that was won in the first half by West Virginia, retrospectively. Yep, the, the Taz Sherman show, and that, that's about all West Virginia needed in that first half. Yeah. And just so good to be back at the WVU Coliseum. And fans getting support, students are back. Faithful are back. You don't have to look at those cutouts. No. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, they were fun. They, they hold a special place in our hearts. And you had to make it work, right? Yeah, that's right. Whatever, whatever it takes. Taj Thweet will come back into the game for the Mountaineers. Kerrigan. Second free throw up and good. I think Kerrigan, I've, I've been impressed with his outing this evening. Yeah, I thought I like he's, game. you know, for a guy that, that really is, you know, totally new to the program, I thought he had a really, really solid effort. Yep, completely agree. I think Malik Curry's effort was very good. Yes. And, uh, effort in general. In abundance for West Virginia as Bandago draws the foul. Looking at Akron scores in this game. I mentioned Freeman with 11, Walton now with 13, Trimble Jr. with eight. Six for Clark, eight for Dawson. Castaneda, who averaged eight points per game, just two in this game. One of five from the floor. And Aziz Bondago has three. Mountaineers will play the final minute and 10 seconds here in front. One shot. And look to close out this game. Yep. 72-56. Start getting ready for the season opener against Oakland. And we'll have that game on ESPN+. Plus. I'm excited to do that one. One that counts. Yes. Mountaineers shooting 45% in this game. Akron 40%. West Virginia 8 of 21 from 3. Akron 5 of 15. It's almost tough to go back to numbers from last season because it is such a different team for West Virginia. It's off of Cottrell, and possession goes to Akron. You do have your returning players, Taz being the focal point, Jalen Bridges as well, but just, just throw it out, you know, we're in a brand new season. Yeah, tough night for JB tonight. Seven points, they all came early, but uh, really didn't really didn't get a good look. It didn't get a look in the second half. I don't think he took a shot in the second half here, so, you know, but it'll come around, you know. Certainly people shouldn't forget about him, my goodness. Yeah, I don't think they will. <laughs> no. Bandago, again, showing his quality. He'll draw the foul against Kerrigan and go to the line for two. 
The Mountaineers will close out this charity exhibition at the WVU Coliseum. Dago unable to hit the mark, and then it all starts coming up. Not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday, November 9th, here against Oakland, and then three days later, here against Pitt. A lot of work to be done between now and the ninth. And then Doggo able to hit. 72 to 58, the West Virginia lead is 14. And 22 seconds to go in the game. Shot clock differential, three seconds will have Final look for West Virginia. Kobe Johnson, nice finish off the glass. And a foul called on Jamel King, the 6'7 freshman from Uniontown, Alabama. So Johnson with eight points. Good showing from the freshman. And more free throws to come for Akron. They're in the double bonus. What do you make of that uh, that expression there from Coach Hugs? Uh, <clears throat> frustration, you know. He, and, and he there there are some good things, and he'll he'll think about those. But you know, some of the glaring mistakes that were made will be the thing that bothers you. You're going to make mistakes, but the big huge ones, the ones that everybody in the gym saw, all the coaches saw. That that's the thing that's eating him up. 74-59, the final the WVU Coliseum and West Virginia charity exhibition against Akron a success. Bake your final thoughts. Oh yeah, well it, it was uh, like we thought it probably would end up. Uh, West Virginia showed some good things but they've got a lot of work to do. Taz Sherman leads the way for West Virginia. Sherman finishes with 29 points in just 22 minutes and they force so many turnovers, 20 of them from Akron who turned up in the second half. A lot to build off of for West Virginia. Same goes for Akron and momentum from the get-go for the Mountaineers. That's gonna be it for us. So for Warren Baker, I'm Andrew Caridi saying so long from the WVU Coliseum where the final score is West Virginia 74, Akron 59. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.